Ford Motor Company, America's second largest automaker, is one company that's planning on adding jobs. The company's announced its plans to hire 1,200 new workers in Michigan by 2013. Joining me now from Detroit is the chief economist for Ford, Ellen Hughes Cromwick. Ms. Cromwick, welcome to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. Oh, thank you very much. Great to be here. Uh, Ms. Cromwick, uh, let's talk about that jobs report today before we get specifically to Ford. Let's get your reaction to that number today. Well, I think there were some nuggets of uh, good news across the board in the report. Specifically, uh, you just mentioned the job gains in the private payrolls up 159,000. Now, the unemployment rate did not budge yet, but we did see hours worked up. In fact, over the last year, hours worked are up about 3%. So that's a quite strong number. Companies are adding hours back, and now they're adding more people as well. Are you concerned, though, that manufacturing pay rolls did decrease. They fell by about 7,000 last month. Is that a cause of concern for you? You know, not yet. As you know, some of these monthly numbers can be very uh, bumpy and, uh, you know, the manufacturing sector had ad added quite a few jobs back, especially earlier this year. And you probably saw the PMI earlier this week. It was up quite a bit. So I would expect still some good cyclical momentum in the manufacturing sector to beginning adding jobs again. What figure are we talking about that folks need to see on a sustained level before we can make a dent in this unemployment rate, which today did hold steady at 9.6%? Well, we do have to see a pace of job gains that is well above even what we saw in October. So 150 per month uh, is probably still not quite where we need to be. We need to see a little better recovery in the labor market to get the unemployment rate coming down toward 9 percent. Now, now you say 150 is not where we need to be. Where is it then? Well, it depends on, you know, where, uh, you know, sort of what your model uh, may be spitting out. But right now, for us, it's uh, well north of that 150K. Uh, let's talk specifically Ford. Ford Motor rising to a six-year high uh, earlier this week. And we see that the October sales, uh, auto sales rate, 12.3 million. Does that mean that consumers are going back into the showrooms? Well, we have seen a, a much better pace of retail sales in particular in the month of October. So we are seeing, you know, a lot of customers out there who have pent up demand and uh, their vehicles are getting old. The average age of vehicles out there on the road right now is over 10 years. So at this point then, because I know during during this economic time, what you've been hearing is a lot of people, as opposed to opening up their wallets and spending precious dollars that they have on a new vehicle, they'll retrofit their old vehicle and try to get more miles out of it, as opposed to sending, uh, spending a huge chunk of money on a new purchase. Are you seeing that consumers are getting away from that now and are willing to spend that money on a new car? Well, you know, what we've seen is that the economics may be shifting a little bit. So the cost of ownership in terms of maintaining that older vehicle, if it's over 10 years, can be higher now than replacing with a new vehicle. And by the way, used car prices are up quite a bit. So there's a lot of incentive there for customers to get out into the showroom and take a look at a new vehicle right now. Is that also perhaps a, a sense of public confidence in Ford? Because your shares have gained 52 percent this year and you were the only one of the big three who was able to avoid bankruptcy last year. Is it a confidence factor as well? Well, I'm not sure, it, you know, confidence, sure, but we have the products behind it with great quality, great safety ratings, and the products are what bring people in. They see Ford shining. In fact, this will be uh, the second year in a row of market share gains for Ford since 1993. So a lot of positives that customers are looking at. I mean, they're savvy. They're, they're out there in the showrooms and looking at good products. Uh, this week, Alan Mulally, the CEO, said that in 2011, U.S. auto sales may reach 13 million. What's going to drive that? Well, as I mentioned, uh, the vehicles out there on the road are getting old. And so replacement demand can start to kick in a little more, especially next year. That's another year down the road when we've had uh, actually sales less than 
basic scrappage of vehicles. So you can imagine with two million more drivers every year that there's going to be a little bit of boost in terms of vehicle demand. Well, from 2000 to 2007, the auto sales averaging about 16 million to 17 million. Are we ever going to see those days again? Well, I think just the physicals of what we're seeing in the marketplace, the fact that we have about 250 million drivers out there, that over time with replacement demand, uh, I think there's no reason that we wouldn't see on a trend basis getting back there. The timing is tough because you just don't know when people are going to have to make that final decision to replace their vehicle. I did mention at the beginning of this interview that Ford does plan about uh, 1,200, excuse me, additional jobs in, in Michigan. What is, gonna, what is that going to mean for that state? Michigan has been so badly hurt by this economic downturn. Well, you know, Michigan is fighting back. Uh, it has been a very tough business cycle and very challenging environment. But you know, when you have good products and you're competitive in the global marketplace, then there's sustainable growth. And I think that's what we're starting to see. These are great jobs and it's really important for the economy not only here in Michigan, but nationwide. And speaking of the economy, if I might, let me ask you a question that has more to do with the Federal Reserve, specifically quantitative easing too. Is that going to cause a firming in commodities prices? And if that is in fact the case, what does that mean for Ford and perhaps other automakers? Well, overall, this policy uh, does look to be supportive of not only economic growth, but really attacking the issue that Chairman Bernanke has identified in terms of uh, deflation risk. So I think overall supportive. And, um, you know, what we saw, for example, in the Purchasing Managers Index reports this week was some firming in commodities. You know, companies are citing that copper, uh, computing equipment components, and some of those uh, commodities are firming in price. Right. Uh, Ma'am, in about 10 seconds, could you give us a definition of the state of the U.S. auto industry now as opposed to where it was two years ago? Well, we are in a period of recovery, and it's a gradual recovery. That's probably good because you can set a good, solid, sustained foundation, and we're likely to see improvements as the overall economy moves up. All right, Ellen Hughes Cromwell, the chief economist for Ford. Thank you so much for being gracious with your time, man. We appreciate it.